Moschino. Fun, lighthearted, sassy, and now more than ever, a very kitschy fashion house. And thanks to new creative director, fashion designer Jeremy Scott, kitsch has been extended to fragrance. Scott has taken the dullest everyday objects and put something surprisingly fragrant inside. A playful irony. The first fragrance by Moschino under Jeremy Scott's direction was Toy back in 2014. It was a fragrance hidden in a teddy bear and in all honesty, I missed out on that one completely. I only heard of it later, in fact, after I got my hands on Toy 2, which I'll talk about uh, in a different video. This second one, Moschino Fresh Couture, was inspired uh, by the spring 2016 Moschino Fashion Collection, which came out uh, much earlier, as fashion collections often do. According to Mr. Scott himself, the concept for this fragrance was to juxtapose the most mundane and commonplace of all products, the household cleaner, with something so precious, the juice of a luxury brand's fragrance. Taking the iconography of the bottle that has no aspirational value and using it as the inspiration for a vessel to contain something so luxurious and haute couture uh, creates the ultimate dichotomy of high and low. What could be more Moschino than that? Yeah. When this fragrance hit the market, I admit I scoffed. <laughs> so this is how desperate we are for new ideas is what I was thinking. However, you can't deny that the marketing is fresh and fun and different. Supermodel Linda Evangelista was brought back from retirement for the campaign. At least I think she's retired. And if there's anyone that can make Windex or Pine Sol or whatever detergent or cleaner this is supposed to emulate and cleaning in general look glamorous, it's her. The fragrance is available in 30, 50 and 100 ml eau de toilette sizes. I have both the original and the pink version here in the 30 ml sizes. Sadly, you cannot spray from the tops. They're purely decorative, but the sprays underneath them work pretty well. As the name would indicate, this blue liquid is a fresh and crisp fragrance and the retail price is not too high. But then, as a fresh fragrance, you can't expect a lot of longevity, sillage or projection. I'm neither a fan of kitschiness nor fresh fragrances, so I knew I was unlikely going to be too impressed by this. And yeah, the fragrance did meet my expectations in that regard. But again, the packaging is fun, objectively, and quite original. The juice inside, meh, less so. Here are the notes. Fresh Couture was created by perfumer Alberto Marias, and it's an abstract, modern, musky floral scent. It's expectedly clean and fresh and does have a slight touch of luxe as one might infer from the name Couture. The main notes are not particularly easy to identify. You just get vague impressions of flowers, musk and fruit. The top notes are sparkly yet moist and appropriately sharp like detergent. The core is watery and green and the base note is a cool musk warmed up a pinch by some woody notes. Overall, it's not really a sexy scent, but conceptually it's pretty cohesive and as I said, uh, is a piece of rather brilliant marketing. I'm 100% certain that many people bought it just for the bottle, <laughs> regardless of the juice inside. Mind you, I'm sure there's a few people that wouldn't even give it a chance because of the bottle either. Alberto Morias, by the way, has a huge portfolio with many famous perfume hits like Calvin Klein One, Estee Lauder Pleasures, Gucci Bloom, Aqua Di Gio, and so, so many more. He's the nose behind many Bulgari scents, including this BLV Note Pour Homme fragrance that I have and uh, rather like. Anyway, Alberto's pink version came out in 2017. 
at least I think it's the same perfumer. Comment below if I'm wrong. <laughs> Obviously, uh, the first was a hit, so let's capitalize on the success of the first with a flanker. And yeah, this one's basically juicier, uh, a juicier, rosier take on the original. Here are the notes. This one is unsurprisingly pink smelling, but not in a sickly sweet way. It's still very fresh, bright and bubbly. The pink quality comes from the grapefruit and the pomegranate. The citrus keeps in line with the zingy cleaning detergent aspect and the pomegranate donates like a charitable aqueous feel, making the fragrance uh, almost drinkable. The pink edition of Fresh Couture basically switches out the vague white floral segments in the original uh, for a softer, dewy, and more rosy accord. It's pretty, it's light, and it's fun. And it's a good thing that the uh, Ambroxan is still there at the base to lift up and strengthen the concoction. If you like the idea of a pretty, wearable, fresh rose laced with citrus spritzed from a very playful bottle, then uh, this one's for you. There is one more scent in this series, but sadly I have chosen not to venture out to purchase it, and that's because these two uh, have proven enough of a sampling for yours truly. Speaking just about the juice contained within each of these Zanny fanciful bottles, to me these fragrances are pleasant for the most part, but largely forgettable. And I say that not just because freshies aren't my favorite. But rest assured, summer is coming and I will quickly empty these. The third one in the household cleaner collection is called Gold Fresh Couture and looks to me like the most luxe and most divergent. So perhaps I should have bought it after all. It looks to be less fresh and perhaps with something ambery. In fact, it's a warm floral oriental with peach compote and florals including jasmine and lily of the valley served up in a cocktail garnished with lots of heady citrus spritz and a dollop of cream. I rather like the idea of dipping a bottle in gold. I've done that to uh, one or two of my house ornaments including this uh, plastic dinosaur. Meet George. I love him. Anyway, I sadly can't tell you if I like the gold fragrance or not. And I wouldn't just buy it for the bottle. I still have gold spray paint left over from this project. And you know, I could spray this if I were that desperate. If you want to smell pretty fresh and clean, love the packaging and don't want to break the bank, sure, I'd recommend these. But you won't smell particularly unique and you'll likely want to haul one of these around in your bag too as you'll need to respray just every two hours or so. The top might get annoying in your bag but hey, nothing is more alluring than the impression of pulling out from your bag in public a bottle of cleaning detergent and then proceeding to douse your person in it. Take that. Okay. Talk to you later, smellies. Mwah.